Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the undefeated post way and show UFC Vegas 79 edition. Have you ever lost a bet? Have you ever had a bad read? Not us, not here, not on this show. This is the undefeated post way and show the best MMA betting show in sports today. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe here to Pub Sports Radio if you haven't already. And I'll be honest with you guys, this is my second take of the show. I've already done this once and I was about halfway through it when I was rudely interrupted and have to start over. So unfortunately, I'm going to rush these first couple fights just a little bit because uh, I ain't doing that shit again. First fight of the night, you've got Montserrat Rendon taking on Tamaras Vidal. Rendon, 135. Vidal, 134. You've got Rendon with a big frame, all smiles, great shape. She looks excellent. Tomorrow's Vidal, very unassuming, nothing really exciting going on there. I'll be honest with you guys, when they face off, Rendon, the slightly taller fighter, it's a bit of a concern to me that Vidal is still carrying that spare tire around her gut. Now, again, I said this last time, I went into great detail last time. I'm going to save you guys a little bit of airspace. I don't like that she's still carrying the baby fat around her waist, and I'll leave it at that. Usually, fighters either move down a weight class or get in better shape the longer they're in the UFC. She doesn't seem to be doing that. With her physique not changing, I'm not sure how dedicated she is. I don't want to lay minus 240 on her, but she does have that one hitter quitter power. She always has the nuclear option. I think Vidal can win this fight and Rendon is being brought in as a sacrificial lamb to give her some more time to kind of develop and get better. But Rendon is the exact type of fighter who can put Vidal on her back, make her look like a turtle, and grind her for 15 straight minutes and win a very, very dull decision. So I don't like this first fight. I will pick Vidal. If you want to bring her price down, I'd say go inside the distance because frankly, I don't see her winning minutes. Unless she drops Rendon in all three rounds and somehow Rendon doesn't go unconscious in that process, I don't see her winning minutes. She's not the minute winner in this kind of a spot and she's very finished reliant. So be careful with this first fight of the night. It's a little bit sketchy. Next up, you got Hannah Goldie and Mizuki. In a way, both women making 115.5. Hannah Goldie absolutely... <laughs> Jacked. This woman is insane shape. She looked a little rough on the scales today until she put her OnlyFans smile on her face and then she looked just fine. She knows how to uh, put a face on, that's for sure. Mizuki Inoue, very slim, very pale. Other than that, no real issues. When they face off, Inoue is the slightly larger girl. I mean, it's not a big difference or anything like that, but there's a big difference in the form of these two ladies. You know, you've got men, 99% of the men's MMA divisions would be jealous of the physique that Hannah Goldie has. It's ridiculous. Now, the only thing I kind of like in this fight is maybe like a sprinkle on the Goldie by sub, just because that is the one place where she can kind of overpower her opponents and, and get some kind of advantage on them where she's just physically mauling and strong. But I can't trust her to use a grappling heavy game plan. And I don't expect her to necessarily go to that just because we've never seen her really do that in the UFC before. She always tries to kickbox from the outside. I don't know why she's not very good at it. Mizuki is the rightful favorite, but I also don't like how long she's been off. So I'll pick Mizuki for the win. Maybe a degenerate sprinkle on Goldie. Maybe the under is okay because if Mizuki has made improvements, Goldie is somebody who we've seen can be finished at this level. I don't mind it, but another one where you probably just want to stay away. Next up, this is where it gets good. Jake Collier takes on Muhammad Usman. 256 and a half for Collier. We've got 237 for Muhammad Usman. And Jake was looking Good. Gave a solid one-arm flex today. This guy dropped about 10 pounds since the last time we've seen him. Looks to have made up for it in the muscle category, though. You can see his physique finally again. This man used to look like a beast at 175. Since moving up to heavyweight, he really has been just kind of the pudgy round type of guy. Now you can start to see that frame building up underneath again. Jake Collier seems to be taking his MMA career seriously, finally, at this stage of the game. Now, Usman, this is the B Usman. This is the bad Usman. The Usman that I've never been sold on and really have tried to fade every opportunity I've gotten. He has nukes, okay? He is in incredible shape. He doesn't have a great gas tank. He can't wrestle very well, but what he is is he's strong and he's got big old meat hooks. So every once in a while, he'll land on somebody. I don't... I don't even get the decision he won his last fight out because he was completely gassed. He was grabbing the fence. Like, there were so many questionable things going on there. That was such a bad fight and kind of a bad decision, too. He did literally nothing in that fight. I don't think he's going to be able to control Collier like that. Jake is actually the bigger of the two men here in this spot. He's got a larger frame. And the way he was talking shit to Usman at the weigh-ins was pretty impressive. He was telling him just because his brother can fight doesn't mean that he can. So I definitely think there's going to be some heat behind this one. I think I'm picking Collier to go ahead and get the win in this spot. He's hard to trust. 
because he disrespects his opponent, he comes forward, he gets in their face, and because of that, he's very, very counterable. If he gets hit with one of those big, meaty power shots, he could go down. We've seen it happen before. On the other hand, I think the pace of Jake just absolutely melts this version of Usman. So I'm going to say under 2.5 at minus 110, and I think I'm going to actually go ahead and add that to my card. Next up, you've got Cody Brundage taking on Jacob Malkoon. Brundage made 185 and a half, Malkoon 186. Cody looked rough on the scales today, folks. I love Cody. I'm a big fan of this guy. I really want to see him succeed. He looked bad on the scales today. Barely smiling, seemed very dejected when he was getting off the scales. Malkoon, no emotion. Blank face, barely moved. Excellent beard game on this guy, though. When they face off, Brundage was only slightly taller, and I say slightly because I actually expected he was going to be the much larger man. I thought he was going to have a big size advantage here. He doesn't. So you've got a spot where Malkoon has an endless gas tank, is an amazing wrestler, puts a pace on people, absolutely breaks people, and I thought Cody was going to have a shot because he was huge and massive and muscly and could out overpower him. That ain't the case. These guys are very similar in stature, and Cody's just a little bit bigger. So I do have a sprinkle at 20 to 1 on Cody's round 1 KO prop. I really think that's essentially his money line here in this spot on Saturday. He's got to nuke this man, and he's got to do it early. Otherwise, we know know Malkoon's going to take over with the wrestling. We know Brundage is going to gas out. We know he's going to eventually tire and quit and maybe even jump the guillotine. So don't trust this guy on the money line. You might as well take him inside the distance or one or two round type props. I actually kind of like the under two and a half and I think I'm going to add that as well because believe it or not, the way the body language from Cody really has me concerned. He kind of looks like he's beaten by the scales today, if I'm being honest. And if that's the case for a guy that we've seen quit in there a couple of times already, if Malkoon's putting it on him, he might look for the door. I am rooting my ass off for Cody to win this fight, but he's going to need to do it early. Either way, I think both these guys can cash my under two and a half. So I'll probably add that under for a violence bet as well. And obviously got the 20 to one sprinkle on Cody round one KO. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm cashing both. But the under two and a half is going to be the bigger bet. And that's probably the one that's going to hit. Next up, you've got Andre Fialio taking on Tim Means. Both men made 171 pounds. Andre Fialio, big smile, huge flex. This guy's arms are gigantic. Tim Means... Looked half dead up there. I mean, eyes absolutely sunken in. You could see the shadow hanging over them. He could barely keep them open, which was concerning up there. He is old. He is big. And this weight cut is getting tough. Means is way tall in this spot. He was towering over Andre Fialio, who's a pretty big guy. This was a good stare down. Tim Means seems to be kind of the public live dog for the week. And I get it. I totally get it. Andre Fialio is a guy who, if he doesn't finish you early in round one, he kind of gets figured out, pieced apart, and killed later on in the fight. He doesn't have a great chin himself, so I recognize that Tim Means is live. However, Tim Means leaves his dang neck out there for guillotines in every single fight. People have finally figured that out and started choking him out the last couple times out, but he's also very hittable. He also has tall man's defense, and when he can't get out of range of his opponents, he doesn't react well to shots these days. I think Tim is old. I think he's past his prime, and Andre Fialio is a guy who was a big, big favorite earlier in the week, and money has poured in on Tim all week long. I said that I would buy low on Fialio if he got down as low as minus 150, minus 145, somewhere in that ballpark. He's minus 160. Folks, we are close. I might have to plug my nose and go with the young kid who's got more power and take the shot on Andre Fialio to win over 10 means on Saturday. I don't like it. I don't want to do it, but the number at a certain point is going to force my hand. I kind of don't mind Andre Fialio by knockout. I wish it was a bigger number because he's it's only even money. I would look more at the inside the distance, even though you're laying slight chalk. But look, this is one of those times we talk about this. KO is plus 100. Inside the distance is minus 105. The inside the distance is basically the knockout line, but that five cents is including the sub. Tim Means leaves his neck out there for everybody. I know it's not a thing that Andre Fialio does a whole lot, but when it happens to Tim, it's right there for anybody to take. Play inside the distance. Don't play KO. Save yourself some heartbreak if the sub happens again on Saturday. Next up, you've got Dan Argueta taking on Miles Johns. Both men at 136 pounds. My guy Dan Argueta needed that box of shame today. I was worried. I really thought he was going to miss weight. He was sucked out bad too, folks. And I'll be honest with you. Dan Argueta, probably my favorite money line this entire week. And I can't 
sugarcoat this thing for you. He looked terrible. Now, as soon as he made weight, he started cracking jokes. He started making fun of the guy with the camera. He put these giant glasses on and gave the double finger guns. Like, I... It does obviously look like it took some effort for him to make weight today, but quite obviously he's fine. He moved around well enough. He could talk. He could laugh. He could joke. He was expressive. So it's not a bad weight cut where like someone had to get up under his arms and carry him to the back and get him rehydrated immediately. Like tough weight cut. Yes. He's okay, to quote the great Derek Lewis. Next up, you've got Miles Johns, who was stone cold up there today. I'm not sure if he was stone cold because of intensity or if because he also had a tough weight cut. This is a guy who's got weight cut issues, who's got gas tank issues, and he looked a little bit rough standing up there today. Good face off. Dan is ever so slightly just a little bit larger than his opponent here. And like I said, I'm in minus 165. I like it already. And I played it earlier this week. Dan is minus 185 now. Happy to have a little CLV trophy in my pocket here. I do think he's the rightful favorite and I do think he wins. Next up, Charles Air Jordan takes on Ricardo Hamos. Jordan made 145 and a half, Hamos 146. Charles Jordan, big smile, no problem. Dude's always shredded, in great shape, looking good. Ricardo Hamos looked a little bit sucked out. Another one where there's no real issue here. I mean, he still looked, eh, I take that back. He looked pretty tired, even just like walking away from the scale. He wanted off of there as soon as humanly possible. Hamos does have a slight height advantage here in this spot, but Jordan has the beard advantage, which we know is worth its weight in gold. So I'm on Charles Jordan here in this spot. I got minus 135, did finally decide to go ahead and pull the trigger on that one. That was, you know what, I, I'm such a big fan of Charles Jordan. Early on in his career, I basically was like blindly betting him, thinking this kid was going to be something insane and special, and he is, but he's more of a fun, exciting fighter than he is a title challenger or contender, and once I realized that, I realized you got to kind of pump the brakes in betting situations because he's not necessarily going to play the game right. He showed to me in his last fight that he's working on his fight IQ. He showed to me in his last fight that he wants to actually go out there and win these fights, as opposed to just having a glory glorious battle where blood coats the canvas so because of this i think we've got iq 2.0 charles air jordan and he's got an opponent who stands in front of him who is breakable if you take him into a deep brawl and that's what charles does every single fight so i like it i'll roll the dice here on the money line and i will of course have the customary round three charles jordan sprinkled because we know that's when he turns it up and if it was his opponents can't keep pace with him that's when he gets him out of there Next up, you got Brian Battle taking on AJ Fletcher. Battle 171, Fletcher 170 and a half. Battle had the uh, the sin. He committed a crime. He's wearing sunglasses on the scale today. I don't like it. Sucked out as fuck. I can't believe this guy makes 170 pounds. I don't know how he does it. He looks like the beast titan up there. He really has like this massive barrel chest that proves he should be a 185er or a 205er. And then he's sucked out and skinny all the way down the rest of his body, arms and legs, just trying to make 170. I wish he would put some muscle on that frame and move up a weight class instead. But say la vie, his call, not mine. AJ Flesher, on the other hand, looked exactly like Matt Sarah up there with a shaved head. It was really hilarious today. I thought we were getting a throw back fight i almost tweeted at matt sarah about it he gave a huge flex this dude is thick he's got little dog syndrome obviously short squat powerful but he's not afraid of anybody when they face off battle towers over aj fletcher and he stepped right up into his bread basket and was staring him down great stare down this is going to be a fun one i think aj fletcher believe it or not might be a little bit live in this fight i think he'll be able to take brian battle down and i think he's tough enough to take the damage that's coming back to him here so I don't hate anybody taking the shot on the money line on either side, honestly. I think they're both justifiable. I actually kind of like the over two and a half. I think that if AJ wins, it's a decision nine times out of ten. And then if Brian Battle is winning, it might be inside the distance. But I also think AJ's tough enough to take some of that punishment. So again, I think the over two and a half is the way to look if you're going to look at this thing without picking a side, quite frankly. I'm going to pick Brian Battle to win but I don't want no part of this thing betting. I think it's close. I think it's sketchy. I think both guys can decision. I think both guys can finish. So I lean ever so slightly dog or pass when it comes to a betting perspective. But at the end of the day, something tells me Brian Battle gets his hand raised. Not a confident read on this one. I'm rooting for both guys, which makes it really hard to put money in this kind of a spot. Because I think AJ Fletcher is still a little bit underrated. And I think Brian Battle, because of the ultimate fighter stuff and because of his highlight reel KOs, might still be a little overrated. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Next up, you've got Marina Rodriguez in the rematch with Michelle Watterson Gomez. 116 for Marina, 115 and a half for Michelle. 
nothing going for either of these two ladies. We've seen them weigh in time and time again. They're both fine. No issues, except Michelle tried to get into like a buddy-buddy photo op spot with Marina afterwards. She wasn't having it. Marina's ready to go here. I think this is a clear Marina spot. She dominated the last fight. Michelle needs to come out with a wrestling singlet on if she has any hope of winning this fight. And frankly, I just don't know if she can do that. Like, yes, it's a 15-minute fight. Maybe she can bank two rounds doing that. But I think it's a long shot to say that she's going to when Marina actually was able to get up out from under her in their first fight. So if she can't keep her down for 10 straight minutes, she's losing this fight. I think the money line is justified. Co-main event, you've got Danny Gay taking on Bryce Mitchell. Both guys made 146 pounds. You've got Danny Gay looking a bit worn out. Another one where it looks like it's a bit of a tough cut. Now, Danny Gay, I will never doubt his heart. I will never doubt his cardio. I will never doubt his durability. He's never been finished, and he's a guy that always shows up. So even if he had a tough weight cut, frankly, I don't care. He's one of those guys that gets a pass. Bryce Mitchell, on the other hand, his eyes were doing something weird, maybe a little half shut. He kind of wanted to leave immediately. I'm not sure if he's just being a little crazy like he is, or maybe he was focused on the fight and wanted to get out of there, or maybe if it was a tough cut. I can't really tell. I don't have that level of insanity in my own brain to get to where Bryce Mitchell is, so I'm sorry. I don't have don't have a good way in read for you there on this guy. When they face off, uh, Bryce has got a decent size advantage on him, and frankly, that's why I bet him. I think he's going to be the bigger guy. We know the wrestling and the back takes. That's a pass to victory for Dan Ige that's been proven time and time again. I think Bryce is going to be the more naturally physically stronger guy and that wrestling advantage is going to pay dividends but this was an intense but respectful face off and at the end of the day I get people taking the plus 170 shot on Dan Ige. I don't mind that at all. I got minus 150 on Bryce. I like Bryce Mitchell but at a much lower price. I don't want to come out here telling you guys to lay the house on him at minus 200 or minus 225. I feel like the line's getting a little out of control in that ballpark but at the same time those of you who want me to just pick the winner it's Bryce it's Thug Nasty we're going with Bryce Mitchell to get the win on Saturday so do with that what you will if you want to be a value hunter Dan Ige is the type of guy that will always fight for your money and that kind of a reasoning I don't mind plus 170 on the dog but I'm rocking Bryce Mitchell and very very happy to have minus 150 in my pocket at this point Main event time, you've got Rafael Fazeev taking on Mateus Gamrot. Both guys made 156 pounds today, and Fazeev is another one that's just jacked. I don't know how this guy does it. He's got a huge chest on him. Not a fan of the beard trim, though. He looked like an epic wild man, but today... Clean shaven, trimmed beard, mm, not about it. He was very confident though, gave a solid flex. Mateos Gamrot, he's another one that comes up in shredded every single time. Not an ounce of fat on this man, crazy good shape. He has some splotches on his chest. I don't know if that's some kind of a staph infection or I, I really don't know, but it was interesting because I don't think that's something that we've seen before. So something's going on with Gamrot there. Height advantage goes to Gamrot. This was another really great stare down. Um, I want to apologize. I did put a comment on my uh, Monday breakdown on this one for some reason when I broke this fight down my brain said 170 I used Rafael Dos Anjos as an example of why Gamrot would have an advantage in that moving down to 155 would be very difficult for him he couldn't do it if he chopped a leg off yeah um, I was at the end of the breakdown on that one and uh Something was wrong in the head. Uh, maybe would have been sweating my bet on the Browns game. I have no idea, but I said the wrong thing. These guys are obviously 155 or so. My bad, my bad. Uh, but I do think the cardio and the grappling eventually could get to Rafael Fazeev in this spot. We've seen the cardio be a bit of an issue before, but he also has silenced the doubters, myself included, on the cardio side of things. I kind of think over four and a half is maybe the move. If Gamrot wins this fight, it's grappling heavy. I'm not sure he'll get a finish. If Fazeev is winning, I don't know if he'll be able to lock down Gamrot enough to hit like the, the home run shot that puts him away. He's a very tough dude. I really think this thing is probably going over, and I'd rather play the total again than pick a side in this spot because I think it'll be a close competitive fight, and it may come down to your judges. We've seen this be a lot of a problem lately where it comes down to does your judge favor grappling or do they favor damage? You know, we never know. Card to card, we never know what they're looking for, and it depends on who's behind the damn table. You can make an argument for either one. If you want damage over grappling control, then rock with Fazeev, and you're probably right, and maybe you'll get three out of two rounds that way. But I would rather play the over four and a half and not worry about it. That is the undefeated post weigh in show, folks. Do me a favor, let me know your favorite bet in the comments down below, and I cannot wait to rock with you for these fights tomorrow. Good luck on all your degenerate action, folks. Let's roll.